and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. And audience, I am here with a beautiful young lady today. Her name is Miss Danielle Scurry. And she, we will find out more about her in a moment. But welcome to the Connecting Point, Danielle. Thank you so much, Dr. Marcy, for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, and audience, well, you know, I always tell the Connecting Point, thus the name of the platform, before we go any further into the conversation. Well, this is actually my first time meeting Miss Scurry, Danielle Scurry. And she was um, sent to me <laughs> by Leslie Tops and Tops PR firm. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Leslie. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And when Leslie sends somebody, I know it's good stock. That's all I can say. <laughs> but y'all, this is a plug for Leslie and the Tops PR firm. If you need help with this kind of thing, Reach out to her social media, Leslie Tops. Okay. Now, Danielle, I want to give you the opportunity to now to tell the audience a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and where you are now. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Danielle Scurry. I am from Charlotte, North Carolina. I am one of the unicorn natives of Charlotte. I was born and raised. Went, to, went off to college and came back, and I, I love it. Um, it's a great city. I am also a realtor. I was raised in a real estate family. Um, my father had a, his own um, business in real estate for about 30 years, mm -hmm. and I've been carrying on that legacy now for, you know, I've been in the business for about 15 years, so altogether our business has been in place for about 40 years. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to help families realize their home ownership goals and create, you know, generational wealth for their future families as well. I, I like what you just said, generational wealth. Yes. I, I love that. And, you know, uh, Danielle, when I saw that you were a real estate professional, the first thing that popped in my mind was housing crisis. Okay. <laughs> and you, you, you find that so many people are having issues finding housing right now. Have yeah. you run across those conversations with the people that you connect with on a day to day? Yes. Yeah, so we are in an interesting time. Um, we, you know, a couple of years ago, the housing market was booming, um, but it was a very much a seller's market. Every house was selling. We'd have multiple offers on homes and, you know, houses were going above asking price. I think we're in a very a much more stable market right now. So houses are usually selling, you know, a little bit slower. They're not as going off as, as, as fast. So buyers have the opportunity to actually view the home. Um, there's more, a little bit more of negotiation. Uh, but to your question about the challenges, um, nationwide, there is, an affordability, you know, issue with housing. Um, some of that was because of the last few years where houses just appreciated in double digit numbers. Uh, normally it's about, you know, five or 6%. And that's what we're getting back to. But I'm very grateful. The area that I'm in, in the country, we're still one of the leading areas that people are moving to. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the nation overall, the South is still a lot more affordable. So we are in a great position. And in Charlotte is just an amazing city. We have arts and culture. We have yes, you do. Uh, most of the major sports teams mm -hmm. and a uh, very thriving economy in terms of employment. It's a big banking center. So in our area, um, although affordability can be a challenge, the thing that I do, I just walk through each, each of my clients walk through their situation and we just you know, we navigate it. I have been have been blessed to be able to help a lot of buyers, even in the booming market where houses were selling off the hinges, you know, and multiple offers. And I've been able to help people now with um, even with these interest rates that have gone up, because at the end of the day, 
we look at your situation of what you can afford and then that's what we work with. So I'm very grateful um, to just be able to help navigate and help people walk through that. Um, last thing I'll say is there's also a lot of down payment assistance uh. um, programs that I've been able to help first time home buyers or people that you know have not bought a home in a while. So that's been able to help as well offset some of those costs. You know, listening to your lingo and how you're taught your pet, I could feel the passion that you have for real estate. And I know that when you're doing real estate, you also have to wear two hats, if not more than that, of being yes. a marketer, right? Yeah, there's so, so many hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the many hats that you have to wear in your industry? Yes. Um, so I kind of look at it at us as like a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So I'm the one running the ball, you know, trying to get them to the finish line of closing on a home. But there's so many pieces throughout that. I'm referring them to other qualified lenders, vendors, um, inspectors, things like that. And all of that, I have to navigate the timing, the the scheduling of all that. So I'm a um, there's an admin side of it. There's also the customer facing side. So community, I mean, um, customer service piece of it as well. Um, have to know the industry. So the knowledge piece of it, but the other hat uh, that people don't really realize is I'm, I'm a bit of a counselor. Uh, the home buying journey can be stressful okay. and <laughs> there's ebbs and flows there. And thankfully, you know, I do this on a day-to-day -day basis. So I know how to navigate those challenges. But for someone who hasn't bought a house in 10 years or if it's their first time, it can be very challenging and scary. So I, I do I do jokingly, but I'm, it's kind of serious. I'm like a counselor, just keeping them, you know, engaged and and learning that, hey, this is this is a part of the process. I'll keep I'll help you walk through each step of it. Um, so those are the biggest pieces. And then even after they purchase, you know, I consider myself their trusted advisor. So even after they buy their home, I'm a resource when they want to do renovations or if they have questions about things that come up. So um, those are kind of the, the ones, the main hats that I wear. And, you know, I know that in order to wear those hats, you had to have some type of training. Yes. And I'm just curious. And I and I always ask uh, my guests this about your purpose. How yeah. did you even know and how young were you when you discovered you wanted to be in real estate? That's a great question. And yeah, so my my why or my purpose um, really kind of developed over the years. Um, as I mentioned, my father was in the business since I was a baby. And so I've always been around it and just seeing how he took care of his clients and the relationships that he built. Um, a lot of times clients became friends and they all of, pr primarily most of our business is from referrals. So that's just kind of a testament of the relationships that we build with our clients. And so seeing how he, um, he would help a family and then maybe in 10, 15 years, he may help their children and just how the, the, the relationships continued. I really love that piece of it. Um, I got into the business right after college during another challenging time during the housing crisis of 08. Mm. So learned a lot yeah, about yeah. From him. I learned a lot about perseverance and just weathering the storms of real estate. Um, a lot of times, you know, TV will kind of glamorize it and it's a, it's an amazing profession, but just like any job there's, there's work involved. Um, so the determination, perseverance, and ultimately at the end of the day, being able to help, people realize their home ownership goals. That's what wakes me up every morning, energized and excited to do what I do. And so I'm really blessed and I'm grateful that I had that example um, growing up. And so that's what's really helped me develop my why. Wow. So that tells me you've got to be good at what you do because if you have a passion for it and you know why you're doing it, that's half the battle if not all of it. <laughs> now, I did <laughs> I did find out that you um, landed a spot on the popular TV series, House Hunters. 
How yes. did, how did you come about that? Yeah, so I am just I was very grateful for that opportunity. Um it was actually my clients that wanted to do the show and they reached out to them. Um, this was actually pre-pandemic. It was like right before the pandemic. Um, so they reached out, they kind of, you know, told them, Hey, I'm working with this agent. We interviewed with them and the rest was history, but it was a great experience. And the, the part that I loved about it was I worked with clients that, Again, they referred me to their parents. They moved down from Charlotte. Um, they moved back down to Charlotte, um, but their family was up north. Mm -hmm. And after we did the episode, they just their family decided that they wanted to move here as well. So it was a great opportunity. Um, but yeah, I'm very thankful for it. So, how did you feel after the show? I felt great. Um, you know, when I was younger, I always had a dream of being on TV and, you know, my parents kind of um, put me in little commercials and things like that when I was growing up. So I had gotten just a little, little taste of it. But to be on a national, uh, nationally syndicated show was amazing. And to do it, doing something that I love was even better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I absolutely loved it. And it was, I was so grateful for the outpour of support and love from my friends, clients, and everyone so yeah it was a really really good experience now you know i'm thinking back in my head to when i was a first time home buyer um it was scary but it was also very exciting now what advice can you give someone who wants to purchase a home for the very first time Let's take two uh, scenarios here. We got one who wants to purchase a home. They're financially set. And then we have another who okay. wants to purchase a home who may not have the best credit and some other things going on. Can you talk a little bit about how each one of these um, scenarios can be addressed? Yes. Yeah, and that, I come across both of those. Um, and the thing is, it's a, the home ownership, it's a journey. So you may not be ready right away. Uh, and I always encourage people when I meet them and they're like, yeah, I've been thinking about buying a home. Let's, let's have a conversation so that we can kind of have a game plan. You may not be ready to buy for six months or a year, but at least talking with a qualified, experienced real estate professional um, that's key. So that's the first thing for either, whether you have everything in, 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 in line with your finances and your credit, or if you don't, the first step is talking with a licensed realtor or real estate professional. That's crucial. Um, for the side where someone has, maybe they have everything in order or they, they think they have everything in order. Um, the first thing I would do is get them in touch with the lender. And so they can kind of navigate, you know, there's a few things you may be able to afford a certain number what the bank says, but that may be not, that may not be where you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I talk with people about, Hey, we need to make sure that this housing payment and the expenses that are involved is something you're really comfortable with. Because I, I don't look at these as just transactions. These are my clients. These are my future um, friends potentially. So I want you to be able to get in that home and stay in that home and be able to, you know, fulfill your other dreams in life. You don't want to just you know, it's the, phone, the home and that's it. So for people that are ready, we kind of talk about their, their goals there and making sure that we know where, what they're comfortable with. Someone who has some challenges, maybe with credit or, you know, savings, things like that. The biggest thing is staying in communication. So again, if they don't have enough money saved up, first thing I'm going to do is reach out to some of my lender partners and see what down payment assistance programs, because sometimes people don't think they can do anything but they may not yeah. know. So we want to just talk, get, I want to get as much information as possible and then connect them with some of my partners to see if there's um, options available for them now, or if it's in the future, you know, we will just work on those to do items and circle back maybe in six months, maybe in a year, however long it takes. And then I'm here to work with them, you know, whenever they're ready. So communication, I say would be the big, biggest piece for someone who's not ready yet. 
So I also hear you saying to have a plan. Yes. Uh, that that you can work through to reach your goal. Now, having that plan, I, I try to give people some practical things to do. So within that plan, what is the first thing someone, is it to address credit or look for what you want? What is the very first thing you would tell someone to do who is trying to buy a house for the first time? Yes. So the first thing is getting everything in line for your financing. So before you start looking or doing anything like that, we want to make sure that that financing is um, in line. And that does have to do with credit. So again, that's why it's so important to talk with the lender in the beginning. You want to reach out to your real estate professional. We have, you know, I have a network of lenders that can help in different situations. So I'm going to direct you, you know, to a few, if you'd like to talk with them. Um, but yes, getting the credit to where you qualify for whatever program you're, you're interested in and also save, save, save. It doesn't matter if you're getting 100% financing. You always need to save money because there's other expenses involved with buying a home, inspections, appraisal fees. Um, once you get in the house, you want to be able to furnish it. You know, you want, you need to have as much saved up as possible, but we can kind of talk through when I, when I sit down with people, I do a consultation with every single buyer, every single seller. We kind of talk through, Hey, these are the absolute things that you need to have saved up for. And then everything else is kind of above and that's kind of gravy. But the biggest thing is yes. Step one is getting the financing in order. You don't want to start looking at homes and then we find out, Hey, actually qualify for this amount it's really hard to kind of go backwards from that that point so what type of credit score is ideal for buying a home ideal is going to be you know 620 or above mm -hmm. um but again i would i would not say hey i can't talk with my real estate agent until i have a 620 call me beforehand there's other programs that are available um for credit scores that are below that. So the main thing is having that communication and us setting up a plan up front, but that's kind of a, a ballpark um, for a really good, you know, starting point. Now I'm going to go to the latter end of this. Someone okay. like me who has a home and wants to maybe sell, mm -hmm. and purchase a new home. What does that look like? That's a good question too. And I've, I've actually worked with a lot of people um, that either are downsizing or, you know, maybe they had a two story home and now they want everything on the first floor or they want to be closer to their grandkids. I've had lots of different scenarios where people um, are wanting to sell and buy again. And again, step one is talking with your agent. That is always step one, because the, the reason I say that with a seller um, you can sometimes have different extremes where they may think they don't need ha they don't have to do anything to the home or on the other side you may do too much to the home so it's really important to talk with your real estate professional up front to get that advice on what things do i need to do for my market for my area to make my house the most attractive for the market um, i don't want to be losing money but i want to do, to do everything that i can to make it most appealing so step one is talking with your agent also, you want to talk with the lender as well, because unless you're planning to buy the next house cash, you're going to want to know, hey, if I likely sell my house for X amount of dollars, I'm likely going to net this amount in profit. And of that net, this is what I want to put down towards the next house. So all of those pieces are really important to know up front so that when we start looking for your home and timing that timing is crucial because most people don't want to have to do a double move. You don't want to sell your house, have to move into an apartment yeah. and then buy a new house. So I've helped several families where we can make it all seamless. You sell your house, we negotiate something on the other side, and then you are able, whenever you buy your home, you make, it's just one move. So it's kind of a, a smooth process, but all of that takes um, planning and a lot of communication with your, with your real estate agent. A lot of communication. Now, what would you tell some young person that wanted to try this real estate thing out, you know, and, and 
What does that entail? What steps did you have to go through? Yes, I know you're, you came from a family who was in real estate when you were a child, but there are some other prerequisites you had to take in order to be a realtor yourself. Yes. So what would you tell someone who's young and going into that? I see so many people. I cannot tell you how many people I have seen that say, I'm a realtor now. I'm a realtor now. I'm a realtor. <laughs> and I'm thinking it must be mighty easy <laughs> to get real estate license. But I, you tell us, what are those steps for someone yes. just starting out or would like to pursue um, that line of work? That's a really good question as well. Um, so yeah, for someone who's looking into getting into real estate, I would definitely encourage them to talk with other realtors in their area to you know get an insight because every area is different in terms of even the process. Mm -hmm. But in my area, you do have to take a class. Um, you have to get past the test. And in North Carolina, from what I've heard, is one of the harder states in terms of our testing. Um, you have to take the class, pass the, the test, and then after that, you can take the state exam. So there's two tests that you take. It is very extensive. A lot of, of studying is involved for that. Once you pass the class, you're a provisional broker. So that doesn't mean you can go out on your own and start selling. Mm -hmm. You have to work under a broker for a certain period of time and take additional training every year in order to be a broker. Um, but throughout that process, you know, that's, that's kind of book knowledge. So there's a difference between book knowledge and on the job training. I would say as much as, as possible, immerse yourself in um, real estate groups, networking groups, um, ask agents if you can, you know, pick their brain, talk with them about how they became successful. Because to your point, there are a lot of licensed agents and realtors in the area, yeah. but in terms of successful ones that are actually helping people buy homes, there's a, there's a, uh, and there's not the same ratio there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So if you want to be able to make this a career, I would definitely encourage them to talk to realtors in their area. I talk with a lot of new agents. Um, I'm powered by a bigger firm and so there's a lot of new agents in our firm as well so I talk with them and you know occasionally I'll do zooms like this and just kind of go through mock scenarios but definitely you know talking with other professionals to get more information is, is crucial um, but the education piece is the first part and then even after you get licensed continuing that education we have a requirement of eight hours in my state that we have to do every year but that's the bare minimum. And, and even for me, I've been in the business for many years. I'm always learning because real estate is always changing. changing so yeah. as much information as you can, there's a lot of free classes that our, our MLS um, providers provide for us. So just as much education as you can get. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, that's I mean, and I'm thinking I have a, a cousin who he's been in real estate for years in Florida and he's always saying it's different in Florida than Georgia. So it you, you have to know the area. Yes. Uh, like you said. Yeah. And the requirements of the area that you're in now in terms of, and I'm going even younger than that. Suppose mm -hmm. I have students who say, Oh, when I grew up, I want to sell houses. I want to help people buy houses. Are they gonna okay. be, and I have young people that watch this, so I need you to break this down. Yeah. Are well, they that's going exciting. to need math skills? Math skills are great. Um, I'd say one of the biggest pieces is, you know, um, how to problem solve. That's mm -hmm. huge. Problem. Um, problem solve and being comfortable talking with people because a lot of times, you know, you're, you're dealing with other agents. You're dealing with your clients. Everybody's different. So having those good, you know, people relation um, skills, uh, relational skills is important. Communication skills. Um, they're, if they're young, you know, they may not work on this yet, but negotiating, that's, that's something, you know, as they think about when they go to college, business management, that's a great kind of field to go into. And there's even a lot of universities, when I was in school, it wasn't as prevalent, but a lot of universities do have real estate 
courses or even majors for their studies as well. So those would be the things that I would focus on. But as an early age elementary student, math is huge and being able to, you know, communicate effectively. Communication. And in order to communicate, you have to read and write. Am I correct? Yes, you have to read and write. There's a <laughs> lot of contracts involved. So you, can, you can't get away with, you know, just skimming over it. You have to read a lot to be able to understand what's going on in the, um, the market, but also to be able to understand contracts because your clients aren't going to want to read 13 pages of a contract. So you need to read it, be able to understand it so that you can kind of share with them what's important about that contract. I can tell now that you are probably an excellent mentor. Do you mentor young people who are going into the real estate field? I, um, so far, I haven't mentored that many going in, but I definitely would be interested in doing that. I have been mentored a lot of people that are in the industry that are newer agents. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I think that helping our next generation is very important. So I'm definitely open to, to doing that as well. Okay, okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about what are you thinking? What's next for Danielle Scurry? What is next for you? Yes. So, yeah, what's next? Um, what's next? I, <laughs> well, one of the things that we've been working on, and it's kind of in its infancy stage, um, again, this is kind of a family business that has developed over time. Uh, my mother and I, we really wanted to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was um, very much, he gave back. He was on a lot of boards, you know, the housing authority, which helped with um, affordability. And so I wanted to carry that on as well and help with our future, <laughs> future leaders, future real estate professionals as well. And so one of the things that we have been working on and really proud that we've been able to implement is a scholarship that we created. Mm -hmm. um, we're working with two different universities at this time. Uh, one is was my father's alma mater, which is North Carolina A&T. Okay. And we give hey, a scholarship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yes, uh, my father went there, and my grandparents went there. So ah. we have a, we have a legacy there as well. Um, but we give one scholarship there, and then we're also doing a scholarship at our local community college because not everybody can go to a four-year college right away. Not everybody wants to. So we want to give people the opportunity to have a scholarship for a technical trade. It doesn't have to be real estate. Of course, we would love that too, but it can be for any field of study. Um, so that's the biggest thing that we've really been passionate about most recently. And then in terms of the business, just continuing to um, help as many people as possible um, I'm, I'm loving that a lot of my clients that have bought primary homes, now they want to get into investing. So really just continuing to help build those legacies for them. I love it. I love it. So let me ask you this, because I forgot to ask this earlier. What um, age would you say is best for someone to purchase their first home? I meant to ask you that earlier and forgot. Okay. I would say the earliest age, there's not really a, an age, but as soon as you are living on your own, I would be planning for buying a home. And the reason I say that is, you know, if you're living on your own, you're paying an apartment, none of that is going towards helping you. You right. are helping someone else be successful in creating their generational wealth. So as, as soon as you decide that you want to move out, you know, I, I recommend, and this is what I did personally, I stayed at home until I was able to buy a home. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can do that. So I understand. But as soon as you venture out, really have that mindset that, hey, let me try to save if it's $100 a month or $200 a month, but have a plan to try to, to purchase a home, um, you know, whenever you can. But the earliest, the better. I know I know people yeah. that have bought homes when they were 21. Yeah. And and when you're buying that, you want to think of this as an investment in your future. So it does not have to be the grandiose dream home. Just right. buy something to get into the real estate game. And now you can leverage that and buy additional properties later on as you create equity in that home. And that goes back to what you said when we first started this conversation, generational wealth. Yes. You set yourselves up 
for generational wealth. Yes. To pass down uh, to the next generation. Now, Danielle, I am so thankful that you came on here to even talk about real estate because I see so many people um, afraid to step out and go ahead and do it. And and I'm, I didn't even have to ask you. You already explained how staying in an apartment, that's not going back into your your uh, investment, your life investment. You're actually giving that money away. And the best way that I can describe that is putting it in a strainer, your money. Mm. And and it's just, and it's liquid. And it's just going out. You can't keep it. Yeah. That's a really good example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but when you have a home, you have a bowl and you you can keep the liquid, but you can also pour some into another bowl. Yeah. Keep sharing the bowl. But if it's in a strainer, it's gone. Yeah. So um, I would say to people out there, don't be afraid to try. And, and I'm going to give my own testimony when I was, oh, this has been years ago. And I was like, I know my credit is not good. I know. And come, I came to find out, oh, my credit wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Right. And I, I my first attempt to buy a home, um, I thought the home was going to be mine. It was fully furnished. Have you heard of fully furnished homes? Yeah. Yeah. There are some. That, okay. Yeah. The seller ready to, to move on and they're willing to leave all the furniture yeah. or the construction homes. Yep. And I thought I was getting a deal all the way up until the day of closing. And the bank wouldn't do it because of the, the previous owner. Something had went, gone wrong with the furniture they were leaving or something. I don't know. Mm, but I okay. was devastated because I was ready to move. Yeah. So I, it didn't take but two weeks. God opened up the right door. And that's where I am now. So you know, awesome. it, it, it all worked out. And, and so I'll tell anybody, go ahead and try. Yes. Yep. Own something. And th to be honest with you, until that mortgage is paid off, you don't own it anyway. I'm just going <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> that mortgage got to be paid off and then you own the home. Okay. But Danielle, but thank you can you. still use it as an asset. You can to use it create. as an asset. Yes, yes. you can. <laughs> yeah. When you're Danielle, running, I had you to get a laugh in. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank you so much for having the conversation that we need to talk about. We really do. And yes. since you're on the connecting point, you must leave a point to ponder. What would you like the audience to ponder on? after this conversation is over? Okay, that's a very good question. I think it's a little bit of what you talked about. If you have never, think about your, your goals for your future. Mm -hmm. And if you have never thought of, that you could attain the, the um, goal of home ownership, I would encourage you to think about why and have you reached out to anyone to guide you through that? So I do see that a lot, especially in our community. Um, we we already have in our mind that we can't do it. And, you know, there, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't make. Hey, so you whoop, don't... Wait a minute. Say that again. <laughs> they, need to, they really need to let that one marinate. Say that again. Yes, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't make or you, that you don't try. So I might have uh, said it wrong now. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, well, you have to try. You've got to get in the game. So um, again, if you've never, if you've thought, hey, I can't do it, think about why, but then take that a step further. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out to someone to to actually works in that industry to see if they can help you? Because I do run into that a lot where people think that they can't. And when we sit down, it's actually very much attainable. The, the resources that are in place, especially you know, down payment assistance, things like that, um, or just knowing your situation. You may need to just pay a few things off. Sometimes people think they have to pay off all their debts. No, you just pay a few things down and have a game plan, a budget, 
you know, so that you, again, you can get in the home and stay in the home, but yes, you really want to talk with somebody about it. So that's what I would, I would encourage people to ponder on. And, you know, um, something else that I, I wanted to ask, and it, I, I just thought about it when you were talking, if someone wants to reach out to you and they're from another state, mm -hmm. you may not be able to get them a home where you are, but you can guide them to where they need to go, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm licensed in North and South Carolina, but I have trusted partners in all of the other states and even outside of the country. So I'd be happy to refer um, anyone that I can't particularly, you know, I can't work with in their state mm -hmm. to someone else that is experienced and that's going to take care of them the way I would. Amen. Now, since we just said that, how can the listeners and the watchers contact you? Yes, thank you. Um, so my website is scurryandassociates.com. So A-N-D is spelled out, but scurryandassociates.com. I'm on Instagram, scurryandassociates, uh, Facebook, scurryandassociates, and LinkedIn is my first and last name, Danielle Scurry. Um, also, just a plug for our scholarship. We are raising funds now. So if you go on my website, scurryandassociates.com and click on the more tab, you'll see the William A. Scurry Memorial Scholarship and the, and the, the details there as well. But yes, that's how you can contact. I love it. Danielle, thank you so much for enlightening us today about real estate. Come on. Yes. Come on, people. Let's all Thank you so it. much for having me. This is great. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. We've got to own something. Yes. yes. Own it, own it, own it. We are lenders and not borrowers. So you can't lend if you don't own nothing. Now, come right. on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say that now. Danielle, thank you so much. Oh, and like I say every week, I almost forgot. If you would like to have a discussion with me on the connecting point, reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com or go to the website, Dr. Marcy's Connections, fill out a form or join a group of creators on Facebook called the Connecting Point for Creators group. It's just a group that we, we're on a platform together to connect network, promote each other, and receive daily inspiration. If that sounds like something you would enjoy or like to be a part of, send a request to join and we would love to have you. This show airs on Tuesday nights on Instagram TV. Right now I'm saying that, you know, Instagram has gotten where they're, they're not showing lengthy videos, but I will put the link so you can go to YouTube and watch the show. You can also get the show on Facebook and Twitter. On Wednesday nights, you can get it on KBCN TV, Spotify, and Anchor. All that I ask is that you click, like, and most of all, share, 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 so that others can be inspired and that their lives can transform for the better. Danielle, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you and, so much. You're welcome. Until we get this moment again, audience, peace and blessings. Bye-bye.